Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be back with you again to do another video feed. My wife and I have just returned from Croatia where we spent two weeks on vacation and I feel completely reinvigorated. Croatia is such a beautiful country to visit for those of you that ever want to have a wonderful vacation in a very safe environment that is absolutely gorgeous, where the food is absolutely phenomenal um, and the people are great. I can highly recommend it. Um, today's video feed is going to be on a relatively uncommon cause of male infertility, where there's absolutely no passage of sperm through the duct that carries the sperm from the testicles through the urethra and in the ejaculate into the woman's vagina. The duct is known as the vas deferens. Now when this vas deferens is blocked, no sperm gets into the ejaculate whatsoever, and obviously there's no chance of a spontaneous pregnancy. There's also no chance of producing a specimen through masturbation that will be able to be used for IVF. The only way to access the sperm is either to reconnect the duct, cut out the blocked area and reconnect it, uh, or to do a procedure known as sperm aspiration, where a needle is used to aspirate sperm from the testicle substance, and then it is used for the purpose of fertilization. There are two ways in which this can be done. The one is where a needle is passed through the skin of the scrotum, which is the envelopment of the testicles that lies outside the body, directly into the testicle substance and small slithers or biopsies of testicular tissue that are hair thin are then used to extract the sperm from it and the sperm is then injected one into each egg. The other way is to do a procedure, by the way, that is known as testicular sperm extraction. The other way is to make an incision on the surface of the scrotum, expose the testicles, as well as the little sperm ducts that will be dilated on the surface of the testicle, known as the vasa efferentia. Introduce a needle into these dilated ducts and aspirate sperm for use. This procedure is known as microepididymal sperm aspiration. The difference between this latter procedure, or MESA, microepididymal sperm aspiration, and testicular sperm asp uh, aspiration, or TESI, is that with the latter, you only get a sample to be used on the spot. If there's ever another time that you need to do IVF again, then you need to repeat the procedure of putting a needle into the testicle and the other is uh, you can aspirate a volume of fluid through MESA which can be frozen and stored for future use. The advantage that TESI has over MESA is that with TESI you can do it easily under local anaesthetic. There are very few complications, very little pain and the needle goes directly to the testicle substance. The man can get back to normal activity virtually immediately after the procedure is completed. Of course, depending upon how much discomfort that he experiences, but it should not be significant. With MESA, there's usually a downtime. Because you make an incision on the scrotum, there is pain, and it is significantly more than with TESI. The advantage again with MESA is that you've got enough sperm usually that can be collected for future use. Now, in our practice, most of our uh, procedures are via TESI, although we do do MESA, and the people that do it are andro-urologists who come into the office and do it in the office on our patients. Of course, it can be done in an operating room if you're doing MESA, and the sperm can then be transported to the IVF center for fertilization. And when we do fertilization, we inject one sperm into each egg called testicular sperm, sorry, called intracytoplasmic sperm injection or ICSI. 
Now, what causes blockage of the of the ducts? Well, the first is when a ma- that the commonest by far is men who've had a vasectomy done, and where a portion of the vas deferens has been removed, leaving a surgical obstruction. This type of procedure, um, where you do a vasectomy, leaves the man sterile, but it takes a few weeks or months to be confident that the sperm is free of, that the ejaculate is free of sperm, because there can still be sperm within the collecting system that comes out within, with, in, during ejaculation. So we usually caution the couple that if they have sex soon after the surgical procedure, the woman can still be pregnant and we prefer to run a sperm analysis on the ejaculate to make sure that the, there are no sperm in the ejaculate and the vasectomy has been successful. The problem with vasectomy is that after about six or eight years following the surgical occlusion of the, of the duct, the man will start producing sperm antibodies, antibodies to the sperm themselves, that, which means that even if you reverse the duct blockage, the surgical occlusion, by doing a vasectomy reversal, the sperm ejaculated might not be able to fertilize an egg in the petri dish. That is why all men having a vasectomy reversal should first have a sperm antibody test done by a procedure known as the indirect immunobead assay or the IBT to be sure, and this is a blood test, to be sure that there are no sperm antibodies. Because if there are, there's no point in doing a vasectomy reversal because you should rather then do testicular sperm extraction or MESA to access the sperm and then inject those sperm into the eggs. On the other hand, if um, the blockage is due to, uh, is not acquired by surgery, but is due to, due to trauma or infection, very often the entire duct can be blocked. And once again, TESI and MESA are the best approaches. To be very honest with you, in this day and age, I see no benefit whatsoever in trying to reverse a vasectomy or a previous occlusion surgically. And the reason I say this is that if you leave the vasectomy in place and you obtain the sperm by doing MESA or TESI, the man is still left with contraception that, he, that is very reliable and can be used in the future. And very often in such cases, the, 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 the situation arises where the man doesn't want to have more than one child. He's usually had the vasectomy done because he wanted to avoid having more children, having had some before, and therefore having one child is sufficient. So being able to leave the vasectomy in place and still de- bypass the obstruction by doing meso or tessi seems like a much more prudent approach. The second uh, group of blockages are not due to an acquired cause such as surgery, trauma or infection, but rather it's due to the, the baby being born without the vas deferens having developed. We call this congenital absence of the vas deferens, or CAVD. This procedure uh, means that there is no vas deferens at all, and the only way to access sperm is through MESA or TESI. A word of caution, CAVD, or congenital absence of the vas deferens, is far more common in cases where the man carries a uh, gene for a condition known as cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a, is a potentially lethal condition where mucus secretions build up in the lungs and pancreas and in other areas of the body, causing damage to the tissue and leading eventually to its failure. Cystic fibrosis is carried across as an autosomally recessive disorder, which means that in order for the child 
to be affected by cystic fibrosis. The genes from both parents, the cystic fibrosis gene from both parents has to be present. That occurs in one out of every four cases where the male and the female are carriers. In one in four cases, the baby will be completely unaffected. And in two in four cases, the offspring itself might be a carrier. It's very important, therefore, that if a man tests positive for cystic fibrosis, that both partners be tested for the gene. And if both have the gene, that appropriate counseling regarding the risk of the baby having cystic fibrosis be discussed. In the, on the other hand, if there is, uh, if only the one partner carries a gene, then there's no risk that the offspring will be affected. There is, of course, the risk of a carrier state, but no risk of the offspring being affected. And this too should be conveyed to the couple as they plan having a family. Cystic fibrosis is a horrific condition. And whenever you see a man with congenital absence of the vas deferens, you should be very concerned that he may be a carrier of cystic fibrosis and then test the female partner to make sure that both of them are not carriers. Because as I said, in, in such cases, one out of every two, one out of every four babies born will have the condition, one in four will be unaffected, and two in four will be carriers. And they should, these children will need to be counseled in later life about the risk that they might convey the condition to an offspring. So congenital absence of the vas deferens, as well as acquired occlusion of the vas deferens, are indications for doing MESA or TESI, in my opinion. On rare occasions when a couple is interested in having several children and the cause is due to a vas, to, to uh, surgical, surgical treatment through, through vasectomy, you, the, the couple needs to be counseled that if the vasectomy has been in place for more than six years, there's a distinct risk of there being anti-sperm antibodies, which then would require that they move on to MESA or TESI. There's no place for doing vasectomy reversal if the sperm produced is going to be affected by antibodies that will prevent fertilization through ICSI. I'm not through ICSI, through natural fertilization or natural conventional IVF. So that then is the story about uh, blockage of the vas deferens. If any of you want more information, please contact us and be happy to provide this to you. Just a few words here. You can reach us by contacting my assistant, Patty, at 702-533-2691. She will then immediately send you a questionnaire and help, help you complete the questionnaire to have a consultation with me. The consultation will be online via Skype or Zoom or FaceTime. We will spend an hour together after I receive your completed questionnaire and have had a chance to review it very carefully. You can also fill in an application for an appointment with me by going directly to our website, share at shareivf.com, sorry, incorrect, shareivf.com. And in this way, you can fill in the questionnaire online or make an application for a consultation with me online. You can also alternatively email Paddy directly at concierge, C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E, at shareivf.com. One final word that I want to add. With the COVID pandemic de decreasing in intensity, more and more people are rushing to get into cycle with me. I do four batches of cycles in New York annually. My next cycle in July is, uh, is full. The one that follows will be on the 20th of September. And for those of you interested in getting into that cycle, Please don't let the grass grow under your feet because there's not much time. You need to contact Paddy immediately so we can process you 
and still get you on board on time to do the cycle in September. The one after that is in December, in mid-December. The dates of these um, ba cycle batches can be found on my website at shareivf.com. The one in December is going to be on the 8th of December. When you do IVF with me in New York, it means that you spend seven days there to complete the entire cycle. All the rest is done with preparation and initial treatment at home, and we are able to get everybody to start on the same date by using birth control pills to launch the cycle. I'll tell you more about that if we consult. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to meeting you in person or online.